Hey, YouTubers, this is the end shot of this. This is the beginning and this is the end. I will show you how I got this right here from this. And I will be doing it via layers so that you guys can see how layers are affected within Luminar. In this video, I created a creative layer, a dodge and burn, face slimming, eye enhance layer, skin and exposure layer. So stay tuned and enjoy. Before we start, people, remember that I am a Luminar partner. If you guys want to buy the software, it always helps the channel. If you decide to buy the software to go down in the description and click on my link, you will also have a rebate code there, which will get you some money off. Check it out. So let's get into the edit. Today, we're going to edit this picture right here. It's a picture of Carolyn, beautiful picture of Carolyn, and it's a bit dark. So I said, what the hey, might as well edit it for everyone so they can see how they can work with that within Luminar. Uh, today I will also be using layers a bit more than usual, just so you can get an idea of where they are. A lot of people are wondering where layers are in 4.1. I'm here to tell you where they are. So let's start right away, right off the bat. We are going to affect the light. What I'm going to do with this picture is start off at the top here with layers. I will add a layer, add new adjustment layer. Boom. In that I'll go down here. I'm going to rename this layer. Rename layer. Exposure. I'm going to be calling this Exposure. I think that's a great name. And we're going to go into here and we're going to go to Light and we're going to play with two things. Temperature and Exposure. Let's start with Exposure and lift it up. And because I'm working with a raw file, we are affecting the photo in a good way and it's not too bad. Now you can go and make this a bit more warm or a bit more cold. I think in this case, the look we have with Carolyn right here, we're going to go for a bit more cold. Remember to let go of your button within Luminar because if you do not, you get like this sort of semi blurry feel and you can't really tell whether your image is uh, sharp or not. So there it is. Uh, you can also play with contrast, especially in a raw file. It's called smart contrast. Uh, you can decide whether you want to use it or not. And you can even go into advanced settings here and play with your curves. But I do not do that because I find that Luminar does a pretty darn good job. Next step I'm going to do here is I am going to get out of the layers right here. And I'm probably going to crop. I'm going to go to my essentials here, crop and rotate. Play with the crop. As you can see down here, there's something. I don't know what that is, but I believe it's the top of a beauty dish going under her face. That's kind of cool that I did that. I will go vertical on this one and I'm going to change my ratio. So I go over to aspect right here and I go to five, four. I really like five, four, five, four vertical. So I'll switch that over like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's looking good. I think that's kind of cool. Let's bring her down a tiny bit so that her face is part of the image. We'll click on done right here and it crops for me. Let's look at that. That's not too bad. Now, as you can see, Carolyn, had, her eyes are not completely straight. It's not her fault. It's because I was stupid that day and I used a really low millimeters. You, you got you to gotta be away from the model a bit because if you don't, the eyes sort of cross a tiny bit. It's not important for this video, but I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back to layers. And we are going to put a new layer in and we're going to go affect her skin with that new layer. So we go here. We add a layer, add new adjustment layer. We're going to rename it right away. And we're going to call this layer skin. Don't you love the sound of my buttons? It's like really crazy. And in this layer right here, we're going to go over here to the portrait, little smiley face here, and go just affect the skin. So let's do that right off the bat and pull that skin enhancer up. And that's what it does. Uh, let's look at the before and after. I'm going to pull that in closer. In the case of Carolyn, I'm surprised that it's such a dramatic look. Okay. Okay. That's the look we're getting. I'm going to pull this down a bit, see what we get. Now, one thing I noticed with Luminar is that it does get rid of freckles. 
as good as the AI Skin Enhancer is, it is not aware of freckles, as you can see here. I'll show you right here. See that? Let's look in closely. Now, I want to keep those freckles, and I can't do it if I use the Skin Enhancer too much. It'll actually go and erase those freckles a bit. So what I do within Luminar is I pull up the Skin Enhancer. I go to Mask. I use my brush. I make sure I can see my brush, and I paint in the mask and that means I want to paint in where I want to smooth the skin so I might want to smooth the skin around my little dimple wrinkles there you can pull down your opacity I always go there for my opacity you can pull down how much your mask is going to work um, there we go I think that's good um, I'm going to go right here make sure that her chest is very well done with the skin enhancer all in here maybe bring up the opacity of that just to make sure that skin enhancer is working hard let's undo that last part <coughs> doesn't matter up there anyways it's not affecting anything her arm chin a bit a tiny bit and we're going to keep the freckles there so you can skin enhance but just a tiny bit so let's go to the brush, make sure the brush is really low when we mask. And we're just going to go mask in a tiny bit there to get the effect of smooth skin, but to keep the freckles on the tip of the nose like that. And if we get rid of the mask, that's what you get. Let's look at without, with, without, with. Now we're still losing a bit of the freckles and even a tiny bit of the line of the jawbone there. And we might want to go and recuperate that with a bit of contrast later on. There you go. That's done. Let's go back to the... Now, you can also pull away this adjustment layer, how much you want it, by doing that. Again, Carolyn is a beautiful person. Her skin is nice. And what I like about her is that the wrinkles she has are kind of charming. So they're kind of nice. Let's make a new layer. Get out of here. Go here. Make a new layer. I'm going to call this one Eyes right rename eyes let's go enhance our eyes so we go back to the portrait and we play with eyes so we're going to go here portrait enhancer we go into face light we might want to increase the light on our face let's see what happens if we do that yeah not great not great lights already nice already i will whiten the whites of the eyes just a tiny bit and eye enhancer. This you can just pull straight up, see what it does. Let's look at what it does to the eyes. It's processing right now. Does a great job. Okay, pull back. Okay, let me just pull that up. Eye enhancer all the way to the top. Okay, and let's pull it out. And that's without, and that's with. Without, with. There you go. Let's look at the whole shot really quick. That's without all the effects I just put on, and that's with. Um, okay, so I think what I'm going to do is bring down Eye Enhancer just a bit, make it a bit more subtle. <clears throat> I will make a new layer, and I'll call this Face Slimming. Add new adjustment, say Layer, Rename, Face Slimming. Is that how you spell it? No, there's two. There you go, Face Slimming. I think that's the way it's spelled. Back into the portrait thing. We'll go over to here, slim face, just so you can see what it does. Brings her face in a tiny bit. I will not play with enlarged eyes. I might go to eyebrow improve, and it because eyebrow improve is sort of part of the eyes, I'm gonna go back to layers, go to eyes, and in that, I'm gonna go back to the portrait, and I'm gonna go eyebrow improve. Don't worry about the fact that if you're looking at an image that's a bit thicker, it's because we've picked this layer so it hasn't affected the ones on top. Back to layers. If I go up to face slimming, it'll slim back the face and bring me to the shot. There you go. Let's look at without and with. Let's look at that. Bit of a wider face, a slimmer face. Now, last thing I want to do is go back into layers and make a new layer, add a new adjustment layer. I will rename it and I'll call it 
dodge and burn. I'm going to dodge and burn some stuff. And I will go out of here, out of Portrait Enhancer, go into the Pro section. I believe it's in Pro section. Dodge and burn. Not a big fan of dodge and burn within this software. It's not great. But I think the dodge tool is not bad. All you got to do is press start painting. And over here you can go lighten. So if your brush is on lighten, you are dodging. If your brush is on darken, you will burn. Size, strength is 50%. You can pull that down. If you like to start off and you start brushing. And you can see it's very effective. Therefore, I will undo what I just did. Control Z. And I will decrease the strength really low so that it doesn't affect my image too much. And I'm going to go take her highlights and just pop them out a tiny bit. Again, now these are the criticisms of the software of Luminar, that it's slow a bit. It's kind of true for the software in general when it exports, but when you are actually making decisions, it can be a bit of a bummer. Okay, let's look at with and without. Okay. Very nice. I'm still in dodge and burn. No adjustable gradient. I'll go back to dodge and burn, start painting. But this time I'm going to go to darken. And I will darken in her jaw bones and make sure her collarbone appears a bit better. Now you see how strong it is? Edit, undo. Why is that not undoing? I do control Z and that's not undoing. doesn't matter. I will do erase. Okay. Uh, strength, bring that way, way down. Now here's the critique I have of Luminar. The burning is just makes no sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So let it process. There you go. So it does burn quite a bit and does a good job. Let's do our jaw bones. Tiny bit there, tiny bit here. Let's look at the before and after. Done. Look at that. Quite dramatic, the difference between the two, right? Just a nice shot. Okay. Now let's uh, play artistically with this photo. And again... It's a good idea to think of using your layers. So I'm going to make a new file, add adjustment layer, and call this rename layer creative. There you go. Now I am going to take this file and play with it a bit to make it, you know, finalize it, make it fun and make it cool. Let's go to color style LUT. I really sort of like grace on this one. Let's look at what grace looks like. I kind of like that. I'm going to bring that amount up. Now, don't be too panicky on the fact that you bring the grace up and you have that effect and it's really strong. We're going to play with that within layers, but that's the look it gives. That's what grace gives. Now, we're going to pull ourselves out of the layers. And after that, you can play with your layers to pull back the effect or bring it in. So depending on what type of feel you want to give, you can also take out your layers using this little check mark here that'll get rid of the dodge and burn so you can see in the highlights where that has affected there you go and last but not least we'll go back into elementals and i will redo a crop because i think her face is really uh, the star of this photo i will crop using one one square and we're going to go and do a crop that's for instagram right there we go. Give a bit of space. Put her on one side. Bring her in the middle. I like asymmetrical photos. Bring her face up to that lower third eye. There you go. And I will do done. There you go. Now you can play with other things, I guess. Uh, if you go back to layers, you can uh, repush that... Uh, that feeling you want. Again, you're in creative, so within creative, 
you can go back into here, play with Film Glow Mystical. Really, really nice. You can also go back into Portrait. And they put Orton Effect here, but I think they should put it in Creative. But anyways, it's just to show you guys what it does. Orton Effect Type 1 and Orton Effect Type 2, which I kind of like. Pull that back a tiny bit. It's not affecting that much because I don't have it very strong within my layer. If I bring that up, you can see the Orton Effect affecting a bit more. So there is the shot there, you guys. I hope you like what you see. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And don't forget, everybody, keep on making something from nothing. <laughs>